Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue deck featuring Jacob Hawken, Inspector, as our commander. The 2 mana 02 Legendary Human Advisor can tap to draw a card and then exile a card from our hand face down. Then we can also pay 6 mana to transform Jacob into Hawken's Insight, a legendary enchantment, saying at the beginning of our upkeep we exile the top card of our library face down. We can look at those exiled cards and then once during each of our turns we may play play a land or cast a spell from among the cards we exiled with this permanent without paying its mana cost. So that includes those cards we first exiled with Jacob, as well as the cards we exile each turn with Hawkins inside. So a very powerful card if we can build around it, and that's exactly what we've done, featuring some early mana acceleration to get to 6 mana to transform the Hawkins insight, and then a ton of expensive cards that we can hopefully cheat into play with the insight, including some heavy hitters like Omniscient, Ulamog, etc. So hopefully we'll get to see those in action. So let's take a look at the entire deck here, starting out with some of our one drops, which include a few ways to protect Jacob from opposing removal spells, with cards like you see a guard approach, which can give our creature hexproof. We've got dive down, which is a little bit better. And then at two mana, we've got some additional protection spells with Cradle of Safety and our Starlit Mantle, which are pretty much the same card as well as a lasso tap plating which can give all our permanents hexproof until end of turn, as well as amassing one making a 1-1 one -one zombie army token. Then we've got a few counter spells as well, featuring cards like Swan Song, countering an enchantment instant or sorcery, and giving the opponent a 2-2 bird with flying in return. We have some bounce spells as well, cards like Stern Dismissal which can bounce creatures or enchantments to hopefully buy some time until we can transform the Hawkins Insight and then start casting more expensive spells. So we've got Silent Departure, a sorcery speed bounce spell with flashback, we've got Fading Hope which potentially lets us scry one as well, and then of course Unsummon, and we can also use some of these instants to return Jacob back to our hand if he's about to die so we don't have to pay the commander tax when replaying him. And then Brainstorm is also a nice one, especially once we transform it into Hawkins Insight, because then we can put some expensive cards back on top that we weren't able to exile with Jacob, so we can still potentially exile them in our upkeep and then cast them for free. And that's also the reason why we have the one mana otherworldly gaze, which lets us rearrange some of the top cards on our library, and we can also flash it back. And then more cheap counter spells with Pact of Negation, which we can easily pay for if we're casting a bunch of cards for free. And then I think we've covered most of the one mana spells. I think I skipped over Shell Shield as another way to protect Jacob if we pay the kicker, can give it hexproof, if not, gives three additional toughness. Then at two mana, we've got a little bit of ramp with cards like Ornithopter of Paradise, Mindstone, Guardian Idol, Cold Seal Heart, and Arcane Signet. Then a few more interactive spells with Counterspell, a classic, very powerful, as well as Negates and Memory Lapse as more 2 mana Counterspells. Then moving on at 3 mana we've got more Ramp, so we can get to 6 mana with cards like Chalice, the Heirloom, we've got Letter of Acceptance, Mana Geode lets us cry one, or Oscar Relic can later be sacrificed. We've got the Palladium Mirror to potentially make 2 mana, Skyclave Relic can also be kicked, the Celestus and then the Unstable Obelisk can also be used to destroy permanent. Then we've got a little bit more ramp at 4 mana with Firemind Vessel, Hedron Archive, Key to the Archive, and then of course Solemn Simulacrum. And then we get to some of the heavy hitters, including Cavalier of Gales, which has the same brainstorm effect, so it can rearrange the top cards of our library to then exile the most expensive ones. We've got Time Warp to take an extra turn, can also be used to just take that one extra turn to transform the Hawkins Insight, so that's potentially useful as well. And then some of the heavy hitters include Commit to Memory, which we can use as interaction and then later to refresh our hand. We've got Shark Typhoon, great to cycle, also powerful to just cast for 6 mana. We've got Boon, which can be cycled for 1 mana and cast for 6 mana to draw 4, so a perfect card to exile. Then we've got Commence the Endgame, making a large zombie token, cannot be countered and also lets us draw two. Then we've got Discover the Formula from the new Alchemy, can seek three non-land cards and make them cheaper. 
We've got the Dream Eater as an interactive creature that can bounce something when it enters a battlefield and gives us more card selection with Surveil, which also synergizes nicely with Jacob. We've got Embolus' Clutches to steal an opposing permanent, very powerful when stealing opposing commanders. We've got Mordekainen to make large dog tokens, and then we can potentially use the card draw ability and discard some of the cards we no longer need, like some of the protection spells for Jacob if it's already transformed. We've got River's Rebuke as a very powerful interactive spell returning all non-land permanence target player controls to their owner's hand. We've got the Immortal Sun to provide card advantage and shut down Planeswalkers, as we're not playing a ton of those ourselves, except for Ugin and Mordekainen. Ugin can provide some 2-2 tokens that turn into card advantage and can also be used as removal. We've got the Striped Riverwinder as another expensive card we don't mind cycling early, and then we can also potentially cast it for free as a nice 5-5 creature with Hexproof. Then Holebreaker Horror, also very powerful if we can cast it for free, and then cast some other spells afterwards to trigger the ability, and bounce opposing permanence. Curabas the Sea God makes an 8-8 Kraken token with Hexproof, can tap down a bunch of stuff on the second chapter, and steal the opponent's best permanent on chapter 3. We've got Lake Claim as another way to steal an opposing permanent, can also be cycled. Nasahal, very powerful as a 7-7 that cannot be countered, no maximum hand size, can draw cards when the opponent casts non-creature spells, and we also have a way to save it by discarding 3 cards. Then we've got Overflowing Insight to draw 7 cards as a nice way to refuel, same goes with Seagate Restoration, which we can also play as a land instead. Then Slin Voda can be cast for free, and then we pay the additional kicker cost to bounce a bunch of creatures back to their owner's hands. We've got the Jingataxius Core Augur as one of the Phyrexian Praetors, which is a 5-4 that at the beginning of our end step lets us draw 7 cards, and then we've got plenty of ways to also protect it, and then each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by 7, forcing the opponent to discard it down to 0 cards at the end of their turn. Then Omniscience lets us cast all spells for free, and Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, can exile two cards when we cast it, and since we're casting cards for free with the Hawkins inside, that will also let us trigger Ulamog's ability, and then a Tentan Indestructible that can potentially mill the opponent out as well. Then a mana base is pretty straightforward, 34 basic islands, and a few utility lands with cards like Blast Zone. We've got Fabled Passage as a shuffle effect that we can potentially combine with Brainstorm or Cavalier of Gales, We've got Inventor's Fair to potentially search up an artifact if we've got three in play. Can also gain life. Labyrinth can potentially prevent a creature from dealing damage to us. Radiant Fountain for more life gain. And Zalfern Void can scry one, also very useful with the Hawkins inside. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Athros, Shroud Veiled, and our hands... Not terrible, but also not particularly exciting. So I think we can do better on a free mulligan. And yeah, this is slightly better. Probably going to save Gaze until after we transform Jacob, since we've got everything we need early on with the Guardian Idol into a turn 3 key to the Archive. And then we can maybe play Jacob afterwards, or cast Discover the Formula first, we'll see. Black Whites could have access to quite a bit of removal, so we might want to pick up a protection spell before running out Jacob, or just generate enough mana to make it trivial to replay him. Turn 1, Thraven Inspector. Pwn probably playing quite a few creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities. Now, of course, we can flash back Gaze as well, but might be able to use it twice with Insight to. Cast multiple powerful cards for free. So for now, Guardian Idol into... Could also next turn play Letter and Jacob, which will then still give us enough mana to transform Jacob on the following turn, which I don't mind. Opponents got a Priest to draw a card and gain a life. That's fine. So, yeah, let's go for Letter into Jacob. And then next turn I can exile Discover the Formula and cast it for free. And then Gaze can set up our insight on the following turns, assuming Jacob doesn't get removed. Alright, Rankle is unfortunate here. It's gonna make us sacrifice a creature, and uh, yeah, I mean, 
I guess we'll still let damage happen, as opposed to chumping. And our protection spells don't really protect us from Rankle, so we'll need to find a Bound spell. Or just uh, find some other win conditions. So for now, we could discover the formula, or we could key to the Archive, and then maybe ramp into Slunvoda. Doesn't really solve our Rankle problem. So, close call. I guess we'll discover the formula here. Maybe pick up some more interaction. Could maybe chum block with Ornithopter to prevent Rankle from hitting us. So things not entirely according to plan so far. Opponent foretells a card and sacrifices a clue token. Okay, so we're taking five. Opponent might make us discard, they might draw a card. We'll see. Alright, so each player discards a card, might as well discover first. And we picked up some decent cards. What do I want to discard? Maybe gaze at this point? can always flash it back. And all our cards are cheaper, which is pretty nice. How do we want to proceed? Playing a Solemn means we can potentially protect Jacob from the Sacrifice ability. So how about we play Solemn this turn alongside another ramp artifact like the Archive, and then if they make a Sacrifice Solemn that's fine, we'll be able to ramp a little bit. And then we can use Ornithopter as a chum blocker potentially. And Day of Judgment seems decent, or we can despark opponent will be able to play Athreos, but we could despark Athreos as well. So maybe we'll grab despark instead. And do I still want the Palladium Mirror? Probably not. So we've got a couple options here. Might have to play without our commander and just start hard casting these. Which is also fine since we've got quite a bit of ramp. Six mana gives them access to Athreos. And I suppose we'll trade. So Rankle is protected by Athreos. So I'm probably better off just using D Spark on Athreos at this point, or we can. Bounce everything with River's Rebuke. And then uh, take it from there. Yeah, that seems fine. Can I bounce everything? Play Jacob. Play Ornithopter. Or I can play Jacob, keep up Dive Down. That's the decision. Given that they can replay Rankle, I should probably play Ornithopter instead. Although the foretold card could be a Doom Scar, I suppose. We'll find out. Alright, Doom Scar it is. So Jacob now costs 6 mana. But now I can despark a Rankle without our opponent getting it back. And then we can try and take over some other way. I suppose for now, instead of drawing a 7, I can still replay Jacob and protect it with Dive Down and then Flashback Gaze as well. Yeah, that's fine. Also can't forget about Guardian Idol, which I guess I could have animated to protect from Rankle's ability.
and wish claw talisman is fine. And Frexian scriptures, I don't care about too much. So if I put a stop here, then I guess this only triggers at the beginning of upkeep. So maybe I don't use the gaze yet, because I can restack my library. What's my plan next turn? Pay the six. Yeah, maybe I still gaze here anyways. Interestingly, the flashback is also cheaper. And then... I guess we... can graveyard the islands, keep Brainstorm on top, draw Brainstorm, and then keep Restoration something we can cast for free. Although I guess we'll get to exile something with Jacob as well, although might want to do the insight. Sure. I mean, now with Brainstorm we can rearrange however we please. So let's draw seven. And see what we pick up. Get to play a land. Play Chalice, and then that's probably it for now. Discard a couple lanes. Opponent can search up an answer to my enchantment with a talisman, but so it goes. Can maybe use Brainstorm to put a restoration on top, as Grey Merchant drains us down to three, so we're getting pretty low here. Not really a creature I want to bounce, so... Let's brainstorm and put back islands and seagate with seagate on top. And hopefully find some answers. Shark Typhoon seems like a good one to cast. And then... I can still maybe play some non-creature spells afterwards to trigger it. Scry, don't need Island. Go for Mindstone and then keep up a little bit of mana for interaction. Can I afford to Obelisk? Yeah, I guess Obelisk is still fine. No maximum hand size thanks to Seagate Restoration, so that's not a concern. And then I have a couple Bound Spells and Protection available. Although three life can feel too comfortable. When our opponent has a wish claw talisman to search up whatever they please. So our opponent plays Athreos, which is gonna put a counter on Grey Merchants. Do I want to bounce the Grey Merchant right now is a question. Then I would be dead if they replay it. Atheros is indestructible, so no destroying it with Obelisk. Yeah, I guess we'll let that happen. Swan Song and a Lay Claim. Alright. So I could steal Grey Merchant or Atheros. Or even the Wish Claw Talisman, and then use it to my advantage. What would I even be interested in uh, getting with the Wish Claw is a question. I guess I could get the Lobster, 
Although I'm not gonna have enough mana to necessarily play the lobster and a bunch of cards afterwards. And that still doesn't solve the Grey Merchant problem necessarily. But I think I'll probably go for that line of play. Make a big shark. I guess I could also get Time Warp if I think I can kill my opponent in the air. Which, let's see here. This turn I get to hit him for 8, down to 21. Next turn, 15. Can I... Yeah, I guess I can. Add six more power to the board. So, a lot of ways we could do this, but Time Warp seems like an elegant solution. And then I just need to cast some more non-creature spells. And that should more or less do it. All right, so we found a lethal line. After drawing a ton of cards between Insight and Seagate Restoration, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing the Archlich, and uh, what do we think of this hand? No early acceleration is a bit of a problem. So this might be a mulligan, even though I can cycle Riverwinder. And then Time Warp, of course, is quite powerful. This hand's not great. But there is quite a bit of protection for Jacob. Plenty of lands to hit my land drops. So I'll try it. And then wait until turn 3 to play Jacob, so we can protect it with Dive Down. Already a couple expensive cards we can exile with him. No instant speed removal end of turn. Alright, so probably fine to play Guardian Idol. Might as well use Jacob first. And see, get Restoration is a nice one to cast for free. And hang on to our protection. Kill the Lotus resolves. This opponent does have a lot of mana. And the Celestus, okay. Might have to cast a Reverse Rebuke to bounce those back. Do I want to cycle Riverwinder is a question. So next turn I can transform Jacob, cast a free Rebuke if I want to. That's probably going to be my play. At which point I might as well cycle Riverwinder since I'm not casting it for free. Alright, Kirabas' Sea God's also tempting to cast, but I think I need to bounce those artifacts back. Could, of course, decline to transform Jacob this turn, but this seems like a good window of opportunity. And then we'll bounce. Next turn, we can draw with the Seagate Restoration before playing anything. Alright, Dark Ritual for a bit of a mana boost to replay Gilded Lotus. So our opponent's back where they left off pretty much. Okay, so before playing my land we'll draw. And those are some nice cards. How do we feel about hardcasting Shark Typhoon? Don't hate it. Way to turn on Kirabas the Sea God. And then I can use Otherworldly Gaze to stack the top of my deck for the Hawkins Insight. And make a little shark. So our opponent could potentially play their 
commander multiple times in the same turn, which is probably why they're playing all these ramp artifacts. Not sure what else their game plan consists of. Lotus, okay. More mana. And a Phyrexian Arena, so they might have a small devotion theme as well. Okay, Boon seems like a good one to keep on top of our deck. So no maximum hand size, so make a 6-6 six, six Shark, draw 4. Void can set up my next draw step potentially. And a Clutch seems great. Could cast Nazahal. Or I could play more non-creature spells, like maybe a Kyurabasa Sea God, which also triggers Shark Typhoon. Even though there is a little bit of a concern for potential sweepers, like uh, Crux of Fate would be quite effective here, which would have been a reason to maybe play Nazahal, which we can save with the ability, and there's no shortage of cards in hand. Still have our dive down available. Could have also instead played Arcane Signets into Kirabasa Sea God. But maybe we can protect our Shark Token. Mastermind's Acquisition. Okay. That's probably going to get some sort of sweeper here. And yeah, Extinction Event on Even will do it. So I might want to put a stop on upkeep to use Gaze, unless I'm content with the free clutches, which I guess I am. Okay. So, I could steal the Phyrexian Arena if I want to, or deny them a little bit more mana. Although if I steal Arena, I also deny the Nyx Lotus 2 Devotion, so that seems pretty decent here. What's next? Alright, opponent has seen enough. We've got a million cards in hand, and uh, opponent doesn't have their own card engine anymore. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing the first sliver which uh, typically doesn't pack too much removal, so hopefully Jacob can stick around, which, yeah, in that case, I could keep this. Stealing the first liver with a lay claim sounds pretty fun. Untapped Temple Garden maybe points towards the Swords to Plowshares. But can I afford to wait on Jacob? Don't think so. Although, the untapped Temple Garden is strongly pointing towards swords, and I do have two protection spells in hand, so maybe I should wait. Although, of course, this could be a bluff from our opponents, just costing them two life. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I should wait. Next turn, play Jacob with Hexproof available. Rhythm of the Wild, okay. And then Jacob can help hit additional land drops. We can play the Celestis and still keep our protection available. Alright, Binding. We'll uh, give Hexproof. And time for the Celestis. And then I still have Starlit Mantle available. And hopefully we draw into a land so we can transform Jacob next turn and cast a free lay claim at the very least, or maybe a Holebreaker Horror. We have two draw steps from Jacob plus our natural draw, so decent chance of finding a land. Okay, 
is it time for the first sliver? It's going to be a metallic mimic for now. There's still that potential source to plowshares that the opponent could have. But nope, they tapped their white mana, so it must be something else. Take two. And then either a Holebreaker Horror or Lake Claim. We're probably gonna exile both eventually. Alright, let's go for it. So I could play Holebreaker Horror. Opponent will be able to play their first sliver with haste. And it's going to enter with a counter on it, so it can attack past the Holebreaker. And I wouldn't be able to protect it. Although I would much rather lay claim the first sliver as opposed to bounce it. So an interesting spot. There's nothing I really want to lay claim here, so I think we still play the Horror, even though it could turn out poorly if they have more removal here. But then next turn we can steal the first sliver. Cold Steel Heart's fine. And a Dryad, that's okay. Take 8, they also could have attacked with Metallic Mimic thanks to the Death Touch from Binding. Okay, so let's steal that sliver. And then bounce maybe a rhythm. Could play Cavalier to set up my next turn with the insight. Bounce something else, and our opponent has seen enough here. Hullbreaker Horror just gonna take over. I've got the Starlit Mantle for protection. So don't really see them coming back. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Raidan, God of the Worthy. And what do we think of our hand? Uh, lots of bounce spells, protection, but not a lot of ramp or mana in general. So I think I gotta mulligan this, and this is much better. Don't expect too much removal from a mono-white deck. But I could still play Mindstone first, and then... If we pick up an extra land, play Jacob, plus keep up negates on the following turn, which is a little safer. And if I don't draw land, I might be better off playing a letter. Right, Signets, so I can play Signets and then still play Jacob. Thematic Compass does point towards a more controlling deck. As our opponent's gonna search for glory. Finding Elspeth Conquers Death but negates is a nice answer for it. Okay, so this turn I cannot quite transform Jacob, but I can play a letter of acceptance, but maybe I want to start by seeing what we draw here. Commence the end game's a good one. So what card do I want to cast for free? Maybe an Immortal Sun? I do want to keep up Negate after transforming Jacob, if possible. Sure. Play Letter. And then hope to just draw a land, I suppose. Firemind Vessel, so yeah, opponent is gearing up to cast some expensive spells. Uh, restoration I can always play as a land. So, sure, let's transform Jacob. Found a basic, even better. In which case, probably just exile the Seagate Restoration. 
transform Jacob. Play free mortal son so I can cast a one mana negate to protect from Elspeth Conqueror's death. So all according to plan, that was a good turn for us. Start by casting Seagate Restoration. Ooh, a Pact of Negation is excellent in this spot. And what do I want to do next? Can pass and go for an end of turn commence. Can set up the top of my deck with Cavalier. A lot of great options. I guess we'll go Chalice, which still leaves enough mana for commence the endgame. Can I even play a Mana Geode here? I think I can. It does make my zombie a little bit smaller, but I think that's okay. Casting commence at instant speed plays around sorcery speed removal, which is probably worth it. Also keeps the opponent guessing. So they've got a lot of mana. They might be ramping into cards like Ulamog, the Cecil Sunger, for all we know. But a Holebreaker Horror is going to be quite devastating here. As we can potentially bounce a lot of cards back to the opponent's hand. So, yeah, can play Holebreaker. Still leaves a ton of mana. Second cast, Otherworldly Gaze for free. Bounce all those artifacts back, and uh, yeah, our opponent's going to be too far behind, plus we still have that Pact of Negation. Alright, so yeah, Jacob, quite powerful if we can transform it in a timely fashion, and with all the protection we can usually save it from at least one removal spell, so quite pleased with how the deck turned out. Definitely a lot of room for variations and other expensive cards that might be added in the future, so it should be a deck that's fun to keep up to date as well. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.